What's going on guys, Billy here, and the DJI Avada has been out for a little over a month now, which has given a lot of people the opportunity to get their hands on this drone. There is a lot to unpack when it comes to the Avada, which I did in my full review video, I'll leave that linked down in the description, but I figured in this video I'd break it down to the 10 things that you need to know about the Avada to get the most from your drone. Now right out of the gate, everyone thinks that you need to fly in manual mode to get good shots with this drone, and while it will open up different possibilities, like what I was able to do in this clip here by diving down towards the waterfall to then swing up and around and reveal the city skyline, just flying this drone in sport mode will be sufficient for getting you the clips that you need. Whenever I'm flying in tight spaces, I actually sometimes prefer to fly in sport mode because it keeps the drone stable and is really easy to control at lower speeds. With a Cinewhoop like the Avada, it's not really built for freestyle flying. That doesn't mean you you can't do flips and rolls and fly this drone like crazy, but a majority of the videos that you are going to want to shoot with this drone are smooth, slow, and cinematic, which can easily be achieved through flying in sport mode. Now on the topic of sport mode, the onboard GPS doesn't only give you the ability to fly the Avada like a Mavic, like a GPS drone, but it also gives you a bunch of failsafe to use when flying in manual or acro mode to help you avoid crashing. To list off those fail safes, you have the pause button on the back of the remote, which will make the drone come to an immediate stop so it just hovers there. You can flip from manual into normal or sport mode at any time to regain help from the GPS, and return to home will ensure that your drone comes back to you if you start to lose connection. All of those fail safes make for an overall more enjoyable flight because you don't have to worry about where your drone is if you lost connection and it ends up crashing. Now if you don't get lucky enough to press the pause button before you're about to crash and you end up crashing your Avada, don't don't worry, because this drone is built like an absolute tank. I've had my fair share of crashes, as I've shown in some of my previous videos, with this drone slamming into metal and rocks, and all I've had to do is pick it up, dust it off, boot it up, and start flying again. This overall has made my time flying the Avada more enjoyable, because I don't have to worry about breaking my drone if I crash it. Now this isn't to say that the Avada is like completely indestructible, but I can just say that from my experience with the types of crashes I've had, it's proven to be very rugged, which is a completely different story than say like the DJI FPV drone, which is much more fragile. Like if I had any of those crashes that I just shared with you with the FPV drone here, I'd be having to replace a prop or maybe even replace an arm because this drone is a little bit more fragile. Also, I wanna mention that with the design of the Avada, the camera is placed just behind the rigid plastic frame of the drone. It's Itself. So that element is protected during your crashes, which is important because that's probably the most delicate and fragile thing here on this drone. Now, if you find yourself in this situation where you've crashed your Vada and it falls out of the sky, DJI has implemented a couple of different features into this drone that help you pinpoint, locate, and retrieve your crashed drone. And I just want to mention that these features are nothing new. They've been around in FPV drones for years, and DJI actually put these two features in their original FPV drone as well, released a little over a year ago. But I just figured I'd mention it here in this video because it really is a helpful tip to know if you end up crashing your drone. So the first way to locate your drone is called ESC beeping. If you go into the menu section, it's under the safety settings section. We can turn on ESC beeping and now the ESC will beep. It'll play a tone so that if we crash in say a large field or a heavily wooded area and we're not able to find the drone with our eyes, we can pinpoint it using our ears to get a better understanding of where it's at. Now let's say you crash your drone and it's just sitting out in this open field or it's sitting in an area but it's upside down like this, right? Which you obviously can't prime the motors. Well, DJI has put turtle mode into the Avada to help it flip right side up. So again, if we go into our settings here, go down to control, at the bottom here is turtle mode. Once we press on this button, the two props will start to spin up. We flip it right side up like so, uh, and now you're able to go and take off. Also, I just wanna mention that you can map these two functions to the C1 custom button on the front side of the remote controller. So if you're somebody that crashes frequently, you can easily access the ESC beeping or turtle mode. Now moving on to tip number five here, it's one of the biggest pain points, at least for me, with the DJI Avada, and it's the fact that it doesn't come shipped with a power brick. And this is unfortunately a trend that we're seeing in the technology industry. First phones didn't come shipped with the power brick, and now it seems like drones are the next to fall. Because of this, I've been relying on the powerful GAN Prime line of chargers from Anchor, who is the sponsor of this video. The chargers that I've been using from this lineup have been the 737 charging brick and the 727 power station. The 737 charger always stays in my Avada bag because of how small and portable it is. It's capable of delivering 120 watts of power, so whether you're using the single charger or the multi-charger, you'll be able to charge your Avada batteries at their full speed. This goes for plenty of other drones too, like the Mavic 3 and the Mini 3 Pro. I can even charge my 
iPhone, iPad Pro, and MacBook Pro off of this power brick, so it's nice to be able to carry one charger that can provide enough power at a fast enough speed for all of my devices. Now, when I need more ports, I use the Anchor 727 power station that has two AC outlets, two USB-C ports, and two USB-A ports. The five foot cord gives you enough room to place the charger anywhere that you need to provide power for up to six devices at once. Something that always stands out with Anchor's products is the build quality. The entire GAN Prime lineup here is made of a durable metal with high quality ports that provides a charger that is excellently constructed. I always know that I can count on to work no matter how much I abuse it. So a special thanks to Anchor for sponsoring this video and helping me keep my Avada batteries and all of my other devices charged while I'm on the go. So in my Goggles 2 review, I highlighted the fact that this drone gives you the option of using two different versions of DJI's goggles. The older FPV goggles version 2 and the new sleek goggles 2. I made a full video reviewing these, but I wanted to add into this video that these newer goggles 2 are a must when picking up your Avada. That bundle that includes these new goggles is like $150 extra, but it's well worth it. The OLED panels and size both make this a much better set of goggles. Like I've gone back to fly with the older FPV goggles version 2 with my DJI FPV drone, and that extra weight on the face is just really annoying to deal with. Now, over the past month, I've had a lot of people mentioning in the comments that the top speed of the Avada is 30 miles an hour when the top speed is actually 60 miles an hour. People might be getting it confused because the top speed in support mode is 30 miles an hour, but to make this drone go twice as fast, you've got to jump into the manual mode, so this drone can really get after it. When I get out into open spaces like I was in Vegas, I had this drone humming at near the top speed to cover more ground, and when you mix that with flying close to the ground or other objects, then you can get some really awesome looking video. So this drone is no slouch. It's not slow. If you put into manual, you can really get this thing moving. Now, despite the Avada being a very quick drone, the one thing I've noticed is that it really can't handle high gusts of wind well. And it's not because it's an underpowered drone. The motors are very powerful, but it's the fact that it's designed the way that it is. Now, with this being a Cinewhoop and having built-in propeller guards, it does wonders for the times that you're in tight quarters and can bump off of things to keep flying, or for those times where you have a nasty crash and can just pick it up and keep flying. It's because of this rigid plastic that the Avada is so durable, but it also means that when you're flying in heavy winds, it has a lot more drag and resistance to try and push through that wind. Now, it's not completely impossible to fly in the wind and can actually be a lot of fun when you have a tailwind to get the drone moving really fast, like at the shore ripping up and down the beach like I do all of the time, but it just becomes a problem when you hit that headwind trying to come back. Now, the big reason the Avada is able to capture really stable video is because of the electronic image stabilization built in on board called Rocksteady or Horizon Steady. So two different versions of this electronic image stabilization. But what many people might not know is there's a third version of stabilization that stabilizes your video after the fact in post, and it's called Gyroflow. In order to get this to work, you have to shoot in the wide field of view and turn off the electronic image stabilization. So Rocksteady and Horizon steady need to be turned off. Now, when you look at the video right out of the camera, it can look pretty shaky and rough, but when you process the video through Gyroflow, it uses the gyro data from your drone to help stabilize the video, and it looks really good. When you run it through the software, it gives you the option to change things after the fact, which is awesome. I don't think that this is like 100% better than Rocksteady. I mean, I think they're kind of on the same level, but it's this amount of customization after the fact that really makes Gyroflow an appealing option to stabilize your video. Now, finally, if you want more flexibility from the video, Video that you shoot from your Avada, you can add an action camera to the top of this drone with no problem whatsoever. Now, the mount that I'm using here is from Ken, original Dobo. He 3D printed this mount. He's got it for sale too. I'll put a link down in the description if you want to check it out. But using this mount, it gives you a GoPro mount or an action camera mount that you can use to say, attach your DJI action camera, your GoPro, or one of Insta360's cameras. Just a few weeks ago, I made an entire video about flying with action cameras on top of the Avada. And while the results are great, I personally don't love the flight experience when adding on this extra weight. A larger drone like the DJI FPV drone handles it no problem, but with this smaller drone, you can feel the responsiveness goes down. So for that reason, I primarily use the camera that's built into the Avada because I think it's great as it is. But again, if you want more flexibility in the resolution and frame rates that you can shoot in, then adding an action camera is going to be your best bet. And so guys, there you have it. Those are 10 quick tips that you can take with you to make the most of your DJI Avada. This has been one of my favorite drones that DJI has released in quite some time because it offers such a cool and unique experience and it's just a ton of fun to fly. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and as always, I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.